Hey guys, Fozzy here again. Sorry I haven't been making videos in a while, but like, well, there's been some trouble in my personal life lately. Like, but like, anyway, I decided though, you guys are probably all waiting for a new video, so I hope you enjoy it. I think I'd start off with one of the best ones of all time. Now, a really, uh, a, a studio that used to be really popular was Amblin Films. Was a, it has a, a whole lot of movies, it had a whole lot of, lot of people behind the screen, and they really bought some good movies, some classic movies, and some underrated movies. So I thought, I, while there are so many to choose from, I thought about, I talk about my favorite movie. Ablin movies that like, well, maybe don't get the attention they deserve. Enjoy. Super 8. This movie, if you like alien movies directed by like, like Steven Spielberg and you always wanted a sequel to E.T., this movie actually may come close. I saw it at the theater on opening day. So it was really good. Got some, uh, we'll get some Oscar nominations, but it kind of just really came and went. It's a shame too. It's really actually a good movie, a good sci-fi series. It's like there's almost nothing about it that like I didn't like. It's a, it's definitely a movie that is worth checking out once in a while if you can, if you could get it. American Tell, Five of Goes West. I love the Amer original American Tell, and I would always watch it whenever it was on. Even this one time, World War Three almost started at my at my aunt's house when I was a kid. But like, but like the the sequel really was even more better. I thought it was. I like the idea of them searching, like, under the city for the Lost Palace. It's nice to see a Mouskowitz, oops, sorry, that was too early. A Mouskowitz family going to me, to discover the Lost Treasure, and overall with the, one, with the wonderful cast of James, the legendary James Stewart, you definitely cannot go wrong about with it. Casper. I, I get. I don't know why I don't watch this more on Halloween. It's it's a charming film. It's a it's a cool film. It's a touching film, but yet I never always manage to go and to go and see it. I definitely, but whenever it's on TV and when I had a VHS tape, I watched it quite often. It is our lovable ghost pal. Let's try to make a friend. It, the, the supporting cast of Christina Ricci and Bill Pullman really are good in this. And over, overall, I really like the little cameo from Mr. Rogers in it. The Flintstones. I don't get what... Okay. It, I really was thinking we would definitely get another live action Flintstones before another Adams Family movie of any kind. But the original one was still holds up pretty good in my opinion. With the wonderful cast of John Goodman as Fred, Bothy O'Donnell as Betty, Rick Morass as Bonnie, and Liz Porkins as Wilma, it, they did a perfect casting to cat to bring like a, 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 a car, a, an awesome cartoon I liked to um well to the big screen screen as I as I mentioned before in a separate video the sequel really sucks so bad that bad I was really disappointed but I definitely think though the original is a cult classic and will always be a good one in my opinion Heavy Metal. It's not often I like adult animation films, but this this one is definitely one worth checking out and watching over and over again if you could see it.
It's um it's especially good seeing like like the way the different stories interact. How like the things you never think you'd see in animation films. And overall I just really like the animation. Okay, I'll admit there's some scenes that as a man I in here have probably brought, been brought, I, I saw more and more. But overall, it's just a fun movie. Just don't let the kids watch it. Catch me if you can. This was semi the, this was semi the first movie I saw, I saw twice in theaters. I, when I saw this at Sortie, I ended up dividing my time between three movies. And this is one of the ones I watched so many times. The the real life story of Frank McQuay doing uh, getting uh, impersonating a doctor, a lawyer, and a pilot all before his his nineteenth birthday is an amazing story. I read the the part of Tom Hanks' supporting role as Detective Carl Hanready is also really good. And I don't know why neither one of these got a nomination. I know why neither one won, but I get, don't get why they weren't nominated. Men in Black. The first sci-fi movie I ever saw, it, I ended up watching this so many, many times as a kid, like, I'm amazed my mom didn't get tired and hide it from me. Me. I, I, in fact, I, and, and amazingly, though I haven't seen it in years, I don't think I'm tired of it yet. With, with Agents J and K being played by Tommy Lee Jones and Will Smith, and, and like, this is like, they did just the perfect casting for this movie. This movie also, like, does good with supporting actors, such so like, Rip, Rip Torn and Tony Shalhoub. And of course, Frank the Pug, that like, there's really no reason not to enjoy this. The effects on the, the aliens in here are really, really cool, they're really amazing, and overall, just a bag of fun to watch. Uh, oh, overall, I definitely like this and even like the first two sequels. Haven't seen a new one coming out, but maybe I'll get in time. I'll give a review about that if it's good. Okay. Next up, Who Framed Roger Rabbit? Another movie I watched several times as a kid that I'm still not tired of. The wonderful duo of of Roger Rabbit and Eddie is like a really wonderful full thing. The mystery is good. The idea of Wazza's love for Jessica is is awesome, and just overall, the idea, of course, of live action and animation is a treat. This is definitely this is definitely a movie you should give it a watch. And as always, I really like Christopher Lloyd's performance as Judge Doom in here a lot. It's definitely a movie that you can't. The Danish Girl. You know how I said I don't think Eddie Redmayne would uh, would probably win for this, and I turned out to be right. I this I'm I'm honestly kind of bit saw this movie again since then, and am and am still totally amazed that like the movie didn't even get a higher praise, and that's despite getting it an Oscar. It's a wonderful story about Lily L. L. B.'s transformation from in from um from being a man named Einor to being who she was, and it's extremely wonderful, like the about how supportive like her wife Gre Greto is throughout it. With the wonderful casting of Eddie Redmayne and least event. I don't know how you say her last name. This is really a beautiful story from start to finish. It's always about accepting who you are, and I really enjoy it. Back to the Future. Of course, the best, the best known movie of all, uh, 
of all has to be on here. It's such a cool film. Love seeing the role of Marty and Doc. It's all around a wonderful good time, and I always like seeing it. It's always... I always, it's hard to believe this movie is over 40 years old, because I always feel like I'm only going back 40 years when I watch it, and it never changes. With, with the wonderful characters of Marty and Doc, I really always find myself having a good time and always enjoying this every time it's on. Definitely something worth checking out, and I'm not tired of it yet. Oops. So, thank you. Those are my top ten, ten favorite a Amblin movies that, um, Amblin movies that I really think are worth checking out. I know I said, like, at the, in case anybody's confused, I know I said did it get the praise. Yeah, back to the few, so that, that one would be the exception, but that would have to be number one on any list. It's such an amazing movie. We got a movie. Anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope to bring you more videos soon. Arrivederci.